Good morning. Paul, in his fight for truth, fights for his faith and the faith of his fellow believers, as expressed in Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. It reads, That their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding, and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. The very reason why we Christians fight to come together, not only for Sunday services, but every reason we can, is plainly laid out in this short but very powerful verse. First, we are one by design in Christ's name, and we need to stay united. Secondly, God knows we need all the love and all the encouragement we can get in this life. And finally, He wants us to be at peace amidst all the confusion in this world. Peace that comes from a full appreciation of who He is and what He has done and is doing in our lives. Reasons why we come together to praise and worship Him. So let's do just that. Let's worship!
Fernandez Mendoza, better known as Pamil, 42 years old from San Carlos City, Pangasinan. As a child, I was competitive everywhere. Although I grew up in a loving extended family, maldita talaga ako ng bata. Panganay ako sa pito, spoiled at palaban. To please my family at para makuha gusto ko, I tried my best to excel in school kaya feeling fulfilled graduating as class valedictorian in elementary and high school. Being an achiever, I thought I was a good girl, and that's it. Bata pa lang ako, gusto ko na maging doktor. Lagi ko sinasabi, I want to be a successful doctor someday. I am so thankful to God and my family, especially my relatives who supported me. Prior to college, I got depressed because 
I failed to achieve something I badly wanted in my ACADS. I remember having suicidal attempts. During college, may mga moments na gusto ko lang tumalun ng bus dahil sa lungkot at frustrations. Nung senior na ako, I got tired living up to my own standard and started to think there must be something else to this life. I asked myself, what am I really living for? The passage in Luke 9, 25 really struck me. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his very self? Later, my cousin Ati Barbs reached out to me and endorsed me to the campus ministry care of Ati Wen Monhe, who patiently studied the Bible with me for almost a year. I was a graduating BS Biology student when I got baptized on January 25, 2001, at UP Diliman. In my Christian journey, and dami ko pong natutunan. Realizing that the Bible should be the standard of my life, I try my best to live accordingly as I always pray for wisdom and knowledge in all areas of my life. I am a doctor by profession. On call po ako 24-7 as an sociologist. My church roles are ICOC Dagupan Singles Leader, Core Group Member, Finance Committee Head, Northern Luzon Chi Church Administrator, Member ng ICOC Philippines Health and Safety Group at ng Medical Service Team. Kung ako lang, suko na ako. Ayoko ng maraming stressors. Kaya as much as possible, iwas responsibility. Pero, pag si God na nagtawag, di ako makatanggi. I consider all this now as good stressors in my life. I'm glad that whenever I accept responsibility, I have my mentors to guide me and my team members to help me out. I used to strive for excellence out of selfish reasons. Now, I want to excel in everything because Jesus is excellent. And as my God calls me to be holy, I strive to be holy, not perfect. My definition of success also changed. It's not having your own house and cars and being able to buy things you desire or being able to travel around the world. It's not about achieving your ambitions or getting anything you want. I realize it's having the relationships that matter while finding your real purpose in life. And it's in this relationship that relationships that I get my security from. Siyempre, number one dito yung relationship ko kay God, then next yung mga tao sa life ko. I am so blessed with my physical family, my spiritual family, the church, and with my true friends. Loving God and others was not natural to me. Kaya effort talaga ako when it comes to self-denial. I used to think that a genuine Christian life is unrealistic and demanding asking me to do so many things na mahirap gawin pero pilit ko naman ginagawa to stay faithful. Pero today, I'm learning to how to receive from God what I actually can't do on my own. And that's continually changing my heart to be like His. It's only in the latter stage of my Christian journey that things just went, went out spontaneously. I used to be selfish but now, I enjoy sharing my time and resources with other people. I used to be self-focused, but now I find myself thinking about the welfare of others first. My Christian life has been a repeated cycle of repentance and rededication. Others worry about my singlehood. Yes, I am single, but I am neither hopeless nor desperate. I know I'm married with Jesus, and if I get married with a Christian brother or not, I just want to be faithful. I always believe in the fact that God knows what is best for me. Still, I am a work in progress, but it does feel good to be at God's side. It's good to be in Jesus' church, and it's great to be an instrument to save lives, not only physical, but also spiritual ones. Though half of my life I was lost, I am still glad for the godly choices I made in the past 21 years. At the moment, I have the joy and peace I've been praying for. I'm happy living with my healthy parents. I love my job saving lives or helping people to alleviate or numb the pain. 
I gladly embraced all ministry and admin responsibilities. Sabi ko nga, I am never leaving my hometown as where I am now is my mission field. By God's grace, I was able to reach out to my family members and relatives, yung dalawang sisters ko, pamangkin ko, mga tita, hipag, pinsan, mama ko, tapos last year, my youngest brother who is now engaged. Because of God, my life has changed and so I am what I am now. I never thought this would be possible for someone selfish, prideful, and sinful like me. God has really been so faithful to me. Now I know the meaning of this full well. Maraming salamat. Everybody wants a good life. Follow your dreams, hoping that if I achieve any part of the things I've been dreaming of, I will be happy. Yet, Jesus gave me a radical invitation. He did not say, follow your dreams. He said, follow me. I am Venus Castaño, married to Lorenzo, daughter of Castaño, father of our two wonderful children, Enzo and Lucas. I have been a disciple of Jesus for nine years now and counting. Having a relationship with God is the greatest testimony of all. I am a living witness of His unfailing love and mercy. I made terrible mistakes in my life. In my college years, I lived a moral life which resulted in pregnancy at the age of 19. And because Dodo and I were still young at that time, we decided to live together without the blessing of marriage. Eventually, we got married, but that didn't work well because we entered marriage at a very young age, mature, and stable financially and emotionally. Our life then was the worst. I personally struggled with all the vices that my husband was addicted to. Maybe it. I became a battered wife, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. I felt empty, weak, and hopeless, which led me to question God why all this had to happen to me. My life was miserable, and my heart was full of hatred and bitterness. I got pregnant a second time. But I decided to have it converted because of fear of not being able to handle the mother life, knowing the condition of my marriage. I was so depressed and hopeless. So I decided to open up my life to a friend who was a member of this church and invited me to join the worship service. And the rest is history. God never gave up on me. He did not look at me as my sins deserved. Instead, he looked at me with love and compassion. Being given a second chance of living a real life with Jesus is something I am indebted to and thankful to God for the rest of me. Following Jesus gives me an assurance of his true, unfailing, and unconditional love. He is my security, my peace and my greatest joy. Having a relationship with Him makes my life complete. The misery I had with my husband completely turned around when he also studied the Bible and decided to follow Jesus. Now, my husband and I work as partners in sharing the gospel with our friends and families. Of course, our experience is not all the time. There are days when I feel down and sad because of circumstances or those days when I was broken and feeling hopeless, especially in the last two years when we were all tested in many ways. I saw our loved ones succumb to the problem. Business not generating income due to heightened restrictions and lockdowns. And just recently, the destruction of typhoon and death in our city that left only a third of our house tenant. All this challenged my faith, and only by faith can I overcome. The one thing that reminds me to always be faithful is this. God rescued me at my darkest point. This is my inspiration to continue with my faith and tell people the true Christ saved my life. 
in James chapter 1 verse 2, and it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties. See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy you can. The last two years were difficult, but also fruitful and productive. God has a way of turning our worst moments into moments of joy and victory. And nothing is more rewarding than seeing your friends deciding to follow Jesus. I took advantage of sharing the love of Jesus the most uncertain time of our lives during the pandemic, where everyone was confused, fearful, depressed, and hopeless. The same feeling I felt during the darkest moments. By God's grace, four of them became disciples. But it did not stop there. God's love continued to affect the lives of their loved ones. Seeing conversions from husbands, mom, niece, sisters, friends, and more in the weeks to come. There is no stopping to the spreading of the gospel. God's love is contagious. It restores broken relationships, hurting marriages, and conflicting partners. I can tell because I am the recipient. Hello sisters, I'm Kiana Mokoy. I'm a 22-year-old disciple from ICUC in Volv, Makati, and I'm currently taking up BS Nursing in the University of the Philippines, Manila. I grew up in the kingdom, and my parents are still faithful disciples. I've had the privilege of knowing the Word at an early age and having convictions passed down to me by my parents. And they were patient in planting seeds of faith in my heart until eventually I got baptized in 2016 after four years of studying the Bible. But before taking God and my Bible study seriously, I made excelling in academics my priority. I saw discipleship as a hassle and a reason for me not to fully experience my worldly dreams. It also took a long time for me to realize that discipleship is not really about the mind or intellectual, but about the heart. My pride prevented me from seeing that it's not simply about having answers that sound good during the Bible studies, nor following what my disciples told me to do, but having a real and honest connection with God. But God's Word moved in my heart, and I saw that discipleship is the best thing I could have in this life, even at that young age. I saw that having a relationship with God is not actually limiting me, but giving me freedom. And once God, my family, and my titas helped me realize that, I began experiencing genuine joy, purpose, hope, and faith that I could call my own. As I continued to grow in the love of God and the church, I saw how God was moving in all aspects of my life. My perspective totally changed. I used to look at times with other disciples as a chore, but now I see it as an opportunity to learn, relate, and build lifelong friendships. I saw that my schooling and my dreams in general, while they are important, they do not last. My relationship with Jesus and God is the only thing in this world that will really give me security. And so, to this day, it remains my priority over anything else. And though there are times I still fail and sin, my hope and faith get renewed daily. But like other disciples would tell you, being a disciple doesn't mean that you're spared from all the difficult, painful, and crushing moments in life. In fact, you're probably more aware of your trials as you go through them. Being in the campus ministry, our usual struggles revolve around school, friendship, and relationships. And during six years as a disciple, I've had my fair share of heartbreaks in all these. For one, the pressure of finding who you will become or simply survive in college is brutal. Finding people who you can be real or make mistakes with in this age of entitlement and cancel culture is difficult. And it's easy to find love in all the wrong places and to see love from a worldly perspective, which more often than not leads to heartaches. And in the recent years, I found myself in a place that I wouldn't have imagined myself to be in mentally. Even as a disciple, I never thought that I would have trauma or emotional baggage that I would overcome. I never imagined to hurt and be hurt the way I have been while walking with God. And the temptation to walk away, sin, and enjoy the world during these times increased 
as my view of God became twisted and obscured. But in these struggles, God has continued to use people and experiences in correcting my view of Him. Firstly, my family and my brothers and sisters in church help me experience God. They offer love and comfort when I least expect or deserve it, unlike friendships I have in the world. My closest sisters know perhaps every little flaw I have, and yet they hear me out and accept me no matter what. And more importantly, and perhaps the most important reason, is that they help me live a righteous life like Jesus. Through my parents and my sister, I see that God is never too far. Through the church, I see the importance of protecting my heart and appreciating the guidelines that we have, like in godly dating. My tita's experiences teach me the wisdom behind waiting on a man who is first and foremost in love with God so that he could truly protect and love me. My best friends who are busy with school and yet do their quiet times and serve in church inspire me to stand up for the same conviction. And my fellow leaders who sacrifice a lot to do the mission and keep sharing their, their faith inspire me to keep doing the same. Right now, I'm still far from being a perfect disciple, but I have come this far because of God's grace. And I continue to celebrate my life with Him and persevere as a disciple because I know that there is nothing in this life, no achievement, no ideal relationship, no career, no riches, no beauty, can ever compare to my relationship with Him.
to all the women joining our service today, happy Women's Day. It is a joy for me to be speaking to you this morning. It is a privilege that God has afforded me, and I thank God for that. Our theme for this year is Knit Together, taken from the letter of Paul in Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. But before I go any further, please join me in a prayer for God's guidance and wisdom. Let's pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for this opportunity of uniting us together to worship and praise you. We thank you for your words that continually remind us of your unfailing love. May your Holy Spirit guide us and give us wisdom so we will understand the message you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read Colossians chapter 2 in verses 2 to 3 in L NLT version. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Paul's desire for the believers in Colossae was for them to be encouraged in heart, to have strong ties of love, and to be confident in Christ. Paul wrote this letter because there were problems among the Christians in Colossae. But whatever these problems were, Paul focused on the solution, a deeper understanding of Jesus. Because Paul knows that knowing the real Jesus will keep the Christians from swerving to different directions of faith. They will head forward only to the path set by Jesus for them. As modern day Christians, we too have encountered trials of many kinds, challenging our core beliefs, our faith, our love, our unity, our humility, and more. But as Paul was saying, we have a powerful weapon to combat it. Jesus. As Christians and as a church, in Christ, we can win the battle as long as we stay together and knit together. Knitting in the world of arts and crafting is a slow process of needle and thread pulling. It is a method of interlinking or knotting a series of loops connecting from one loop to another. It requires patience, perseverance, and dedication. It takes so much time and energy and, of course, the whole heart to see the work done. Yung mga nagagang chili dito ay alam na alam ang proseso nito. Alam nila kung gaano kahirap makagawa ng buong damit or sweatshirt or kahit yung simpleng center table cloth. Pagod at sakit ng kamay, sakit sa mata at balakang. Kasi palaging nakaupo. Pero di ba? Laking saya mo rin ang nararamdaman pag yung pinaghihirapan mo ay nagiging maganda ang resulta. The same is true for your relationship with one another. If you want a long and lasting relationship with your spouse, friends, family, both physical and spiritual, you need to give your time and energy and your whole heart to make it. As Paul delights to see the church in Colossae to be knitted together, his letter can also be an encouragement to our churches today to do the same. There are two things I want us to focus on today. First, the importance of fellowship, and second, our love for one another. My first point 
is encouragement from togetherness. Paul longs for every Christian to be encouraged in their hearts. He knows that a discouraged Christian is an easy target of the enemy. This encouragement, however, the warmth, the love, concern, the joy, can only be felt real when we have sincere, deep, and strong relationship with one another. And this starts when you, me, connecting ourselves strongly, first to Christ, then to the fellowship in the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 24 to 27, it reads, that God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that left it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one is a part of it. Here Paul emphasizes the importance of one another in the fellowship. Everyone needs each other, and everyone needs encouragement from one another, regardless of status, age, or role you're handling in the ministry. God put us together, not separate, but together, so that we feel the pain, the suffering, the comfort, and the rejoicing as one body. No one must be left behind. Our strong relationship with one another will help us stay faithful in our walk with God, keeping us intact even during the harsh weathers in our Christianity. We can pick up a great insight from the Emperor Penguin's survival feat. Emperor penguins live in the coldest climate on Earth, in Antarctica. They endure wind chills that reach negative 30 degrees Celsius and below their thick feathers and fats, which are called the blubber, Help them warm their bodies, but are not enough to sustain them for months in the cold days of winter. To keep them thriving in their harsh environment, they huddle together in hundreds and thousands to escape the chill wind and preserve the warmth. The center penguins, ang ginagawa niya, they keep moving through the huddle. Kasi mainit din pag andun siya sa center. They move to the perimeter of the group, on the outside of the group, so that the penguins on the outside can move inward to get warm. Such an inspiring example to learn from these animals, right? Our fellowship in the church today is greatly tested, especially at this time of limited face-to-face gathering or spending time and detime. We are at the moment facing the harshest climate in our Christianity. Maybe many of us are tired and depressed, are experiencing fatigue, especially in Zoom meetings and fellowships. I'll be honest, the last two years have been very challenging for all of us. And personally, nung umpisa, medyo okay pa. But as the months Passed by, lumalabas na. Yung pagiging impatient ko, I noticed myself, nag-brumble and complain easily. My heart was tested in many ways. Iniisa-isa ni God, nilabas, kung ano talaga yung nasa puso ko. Especially nung namatay yung family namin, nung magkasakit yung mom ko sa COVID, at bumakala ng family namin, we will lose her. And na rin nung nagkasakit kami as a family. Na-hospital ako. And worst, na-experience namin nung binagyo kami. That was the last blow talaga ng faith ko na bumigay ang heart ko. I lost the joy of being with the fellowship. Especially in online meetings and services. Hindi na ako nagiging excited. And I feel like 
hindi na naman ako nakakakulit. My heart was dwindling down. And I saw yung struggle na yun na parang ang bigat-bigat sa loob. And I know that it's not helping my heart. I was confessing that to my husband. And in fact, I was telling him, kung pwede mag-retreat kami, punta kami doon uli sa bundok. Kasi hindi ko na mahanap yung heart ko. Nagiging lukewarm, nagiging cold, whatever you call it. Yun yung na-feel ko. But I know, hindi siya tama. And if yung sa sinabi doon si example ng penguins, if I continue to be like that, I know, I will lose my heart. I will lose my faith. And I realize, just learning from this story as well, if I am to thrive, if we are to thrive in our faith, we need to forge the unity among each other. I have to forge that unity among my brothers and sisters. Kahit pa nahihirapan ako. And if we want to keep that warm, we need to be together with our brothers and sisters. If you feel alone, or isolated, I encourage you to come and join the huddle. I've experienced that myself. And I know, mahira, because it's a struggle from within. Sisters, if you're experiencing that today, you have a big family waiting for you to come. Here. Come, join the huddle. How do you keep yourselves warm in the winter days of your Christianity? I have some practicals for you. Number one, prayer and Bible reading. This is the best time to stay close to God because this is the point in your life that you are at your weakest. You are vulnerable to any attacks of the enemy. I am not saying that you pray less when you are strong spiritually because you don't know how the devil works. We need to be vigilant with our hearts, without giving the enemy a foothold. Next, be involved in Bible studies with people. Sharing with your faith refreshes your heart, right? I've heard a lot of stories from disciples who struggled in their faith and were helped out when they joined Bible studies. It helped restore their joy after being refreshed by the Word of God. And hearing a seeking soul wanting to follow Jesus. Bible studies excite the spirit in you, especially if it's your family or a close friend you are studying the Bible with. The testimony of Venus was indeed very inspiring. During the pandemic, she helped several friends of hers become disciples. Not only did she inspire her friends, but also encourage those sisters who sat in with her during the Bible studies. Her zeal for the lost is very contagious. She was not just fruitful during the pandemic, but ever since she became a disciple, she was very instrumental in the conversions of many women. Third, initiate a time together. Maybe a cup of coffee with some sisters or a group dating with some brothers and sisters or with your Bible talk group, a prayer time, whatever that will keep you, your spirits warm. Do it. It makes a lot of difference when you have someone to talk to, where you can express anything that concerns you or things that encourage you. Building strong ties with people around you especially those who can help you with your faith, will keep you thriving in your life's spiritual journey. Our bond with one another is vital to our Christianity, but a stronger love for one another secures the tie of unity. Second point, unity forged in love. Paul talks about a unity that is based on love. A fellowship that is so close, you can feel the ties of love. Later in the letter, he mentions love again. In Colossians 3, verse 14, it says, And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. 
Paul considers love as the glue that binds people together. As individuals, we are created by God uniquely. Unique in the sense that we differ in many ways. In form, in language, or dialect, may Tagalog, Visaya, Uray, Pampangenyo, Chabacano, or in personalities and temperaments, yung pag-uugali. But despite our differences, love is the key that brings us together in harmony. I can relate an example like in a choir that has different voice ranges. May alto, soprano, bass, tenor. But when they sing a song in different voices and blended together, they make a piece of beautiful music. Love is described in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Always means at all times. It means forever. So, ibig sabihin, may forever sa love. Because the Bible says so. So, how do we protect each other? By being sensitive to the feelings of others. Especially in our use of words. When we truly love, we say things that go back. Not tear down. Kaya, di ba, ang sarap pakinggan pag sinasabihan ka na, I believe in you. You can do it. I'm praying for you. I'm just here for you. Words can be very destructive. But if used sensitively, it can inspire many. We protect by being there for one another, especially when someone needs help. And I want to take this opportunity of thanking the sisters the disciples who had helped us in our time to flee, especially when Odette uh, struck Cebu City and the Visayas region. We are so grateful for the support you have extended to us. Binigyan niyo kami ng tubig in time na wala ka ng tubig. Nagbigay kayo ng genset. Yung genset na yun, ang laki ng tulong kasi Yun yung ginamit namin to provide water for our brothers and sisters here in Cebu. Maraming maraming salamat po talaga. And we felt that love. And you know, the kind words also, yung mga well wishes na binigay niyo sa amin. Thank you so much. When we love, we must also learn to be trusting. Trusting enough that we give room for grace. Grace that even if people will fail, you have a big heart to accept them and understand them and offer help if needed. Because you understand your own failings too and that you are embraced by the love of Jesus who shows you mercy. Love is not self-seeking in First Corinthians 13.5. Therefore, we set aside right, self-righteousness, comfort, and even our plain rights. Marami po tayo nun. The right to feel this way, the right to be heard, the right to do this or that, the right to say this or that. Most especially when the relationship with one another is already affected. We set those aside and consider what builds up others more. That is love expressed with maturity and humility. And the perfect person to relate to this is Jesus. In Romans 5 verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that a heart-moving truth? That while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. We all deserve to be punished, to suffer from God's wrath because of our sins. But Jesus' unconditional love took 
our punishment on himself, sacrificing his blood on the cross so we will all be forgiven and set free from the slavery of sin. Who among your family and friends will do that for you? Let's say you committed a crime and are convicted for life imprisonment. Who do you think in your family or friends are willing to take your punishment? I bet none, right? But Jesus did. He didn't just save us from a lifetime punishment, but eternal condemnation as well. Jesus' love has no equal. And to quote the song, there is no love like the love of Jesus. Never to fade or fall till into the rest of the house of God. He has gathered us all. Jesus' love Precious love, boundless and pure and free. Oh, turn to that love, weary, wandering soul. Jesus, lead it for you. In closing, Christ's love is powerful enough to bring to a new life sinners like us who are dead because of transgressions. But through his precious blood that was shed on the cross, we were given hope. Hope that when we remain in his name, we will not only be encouraged in the heart, but also united in his perfect love, a love that is life in the life. Let us pray for the community. Most loving and gracious God, thank you for Jesus, whom you said, to be God, the sacrificial lamb, lamb for our sins to be forgiven. We are eternally indebted to the cross, indebted to your unconditional love. Thank you for not treating us as our sins deserve. May our hearts be grateful always as we remember your saving blood that gives us a new and meaningful life. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.
Maraming salamat, girlie. I want to thank God for using you to inspire us today. Pinakita mo sa amin ang kahalagahan ng magkaisa sa pagmamahal. Meet together in love. Kasi tulad ng isang ginachil yung damit, tinahi ang bawat hibla, pinagkabit-kabit, pinagdugtong-dugtong, tinahi tayo isa-isa upang maging isa. Kahit tayo ay magkakaiba. May pagkakataon na puputo lang ibang hibla at nagkakabuhol-buhol. Pero patuloy na ginagawaan ng paraan upang maibalik at mabuo muli. Kalap, kalakip ng mahabang pasensya at pagtsatsaga. Ang ating master neater ay si Jesus na gumawa ng desenyo na basihan kung paano tayo hubugin at ayusin upang maayos ang ating buhay. Dito at sa eternity. Sa maraming challenges at trials sa akin at sa aming pamilya, my love was tested. My faith was challenged. I felt the love of God through discipling, encouragement, and prayers of the disciples that kept me strong. Sisters, lahat tayo nakaka-experience ng sigalot ng pandemic. Whatever your situation is, Jesus is waiting for our responses to His calling. For He is our ultimate source of encouragement and love. Paul mentioned that we could also find encouragement by being together and being united out of love for each other. Let's take it to heart the practicals that Gurley mentioned. Let's talk to God in prayer and listen to His words. Get refreshed by sharing our faith and conviction through studying the Bible to the lost and initiate a time together to encourage and get encouragement. In closing, this March, this month of March, we are celebrating International Women's Days. Isang magandang pagkakataon to make these practicals happen soon. On Tuesday, March 8, we have an ICOC, Asian Women Prayer and Fasting. We can set up a time with your Bible Talks, D-Groups, partner with your mom, sisters, or Lola. Build stronger friendships and renew and rekindle those relationships. Then on March 20, we will all join together with ICOC Asian Women Celebration. Let's all get excited about a life-changing worship service. And to guide us in our discussion, since we all have witnesses, how will you value and love other people according to God's design relationships? Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for loving us unconditionally. Only by loving each other that your love will be made complete. I pray that we will all be selfless to encourage those who need encouragement and let, uh, and let your love be the source of our unity in this difficult time. I pray that we will appreciate how you design relationship that will help us be fruitful faithful and stronger in our daily battles. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.